is something that's in all of our bodies. And cells make RNA, but cells also have to break RNA down. And that's true of everything. We tend to think about the production of all these compounds, but these compounds also have to be broken down. We have discovered that there is a connection between the ability of these organisms to make antibiotics and their ability to break down RNA. And we're trying to understand that connection. Microorganisms can get off along without us, but we can't get along without them. They do things that are absolutely essential for human life on the planet. These organisms that I could work with grow very slowly. So there have been times, for example, when I've had to do, do an experiment and I have to go in in the middle of the night to take care of it. I have to go in two or three, four o'clock in the morning. And that's not fun. And on those days, again, I say to myself, why am I doing this? But when I get the answer at the end, it's all worth it. Most of the experiments that I do don't work. And most scientists will tell you that. Most of the experiments that I do don't work. But I learn something even when they don't. And sometimes you even learn more from the ones that don't work than you learn, learn from the ones that do. So yeah, there are going to be days when I go home and I say to myself, why am I doing this? But those are few and far between. I think that most scientists, even the ones who are really famous, would probably tell you that in addition to talent and, and ability, a whole lot of luck goes into that kind of thing. <laughs> I think it was Louis Pat. You probably heard of the pasteurization, the technique of pasteurization to make milk. Well, that t that term is, is is named after a French scientist named Louis Pasteur, and one of his famous quotes is that chance favors the prepared mind. So you got to be ready, but you also got to be lucky. And one of the things that I find most about exciting about science is the fact that I'm doing things that nobody has ever done before. I'm not necessarily going to win any prizes or anything like that. But almost every day in my laboratory, I'm discovering something that nobody has ever seen before. And I find that really exciting. And I think that's the kind of excitement that we have to try to convey to you as well, that there are really a lot of fun things to do out there that, again, have to do with, with the practice of science. For the last, well, since I, ever, ever since I have been a, a a scientist ever since I've been a, a faculty member. I have encouraged and recruited black students to work with me and to try to point them in that same kind of direction. I think many of us have, have felt that it was somebody else's responsibility to try to bring along the next generations of, science, of, of, of young scientists. One is, is all you need. I mean, it, it would be nice if all 18 of them did but one, getting one student, exciting one student about science is a victory. The students inquired about uh, failing. And sometimes when we fail, we think that's the end of the story, but it's not. Actually, for some of us, I know for scientists like myself, failure was actually a gift that enabled me to turn things around because I was able to dismantle the failure, deconstruct it, and to figure out what I was doing was wrong and then turn that very thing into a success. And that's what we do as scientists and engineers. We're not afraid to fail. At this time, we're going to have the yellow group come. My name is Tashiana Mason from Columbus Afrocentric Early College, and today I learned that science, it, after, you pay, after you do a whole bunch about it, it pays off in the end. It's just not something, you even though you have to work really hard to do it, it pays off. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Jeremy Saunders. I'm a junior at Columbus Afrocentric Early College, and today, it was really interesting because I met some inspiring people and they taught me to not get discouraged uh, and keep striving and pushing no matter where you come from or your family background because you can do anything. Thank you. Hi, my name is Christian Spinner. I'm from Columbus Afrocentric. And today I learned that um, swine flu was um, micro mis that and um, I didn't know that 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 swine flu could be that you know 
And I learned that um, algae and um, fungi was also um, that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Demarcus Scott. I'm from Columbus South Central Curly College. Um, today I've learned that science is an ever-changing career and that just because you go into one thing, that doesn't mean that you're not going to work on something else. And here's our video, Dr. Wayne Bowman. <laughs> That's an interesting question. I think I always knew that I wanted to be some type of scientist. Um, I didn't know exactly what type of scientist I wanted to be. What does it mean to me to be a history maker? Wow, that's a good question. Well, first, I never, I never realized that I was a history maker. I mean, I never set out to be a history maker. Uh, but because there, are, I guess I'm a history maker because there, there's so few minorities that are doing, uh, you know, this type of, of, of science uh, work. Um, you know, I just go to, went through my career, going to the work every day, doing my research in my lab, not really thinking about the, the idea that I'm actually making history. But but it's it makes me very proud to know that I am, and I'm here really to inspire other students because I don't like being. Uh, the only history maker. I like to see more history makers uh, come along and, uh, and hopefully some of you will be inspired to, to, to join me. I, I think there, there, there's so few African American scientists because um, uh, of, of lack of opportunity. I think that if, if, if there were more forums like this, I never had this when I was coming along. I just sort of always knew I wanted to be a scientist. I never had role models until I actually got to college. I had never met another scientist until I actually got to college and I saw these old role models and I thought that I could do it. Along my scientific career, I had a lot of people that helped me. We called them mentors. And, um, and, and one uh, of my mentors was uh, one of my uh, professors that I had in college that I really looked up to. And, um, and I really, because I went to a historically uh, black college and university, Almost all of my professors um, were, were African Americans. And, and I saw that I could actually do this and be a college professor. I was sort of a, a strange kid because I read a lot of science books. And, and um, one book that I read was called The Story of the Atom, which actually was one reason why I thought I wanted to be a nuclear physicist. It, it talked about how, how uh, atomic fission was first developed. And it, I read about all the different scientists that were involved in, in, um, in, in splitting the atom. There are, there are lots of discoveries because science is a, is a, is a field that builds on discovery. So, so I couldn't be doing what I'm doing now had, had not someone figured out how to, um, how to uh, grow tumor cells in a, in a culture dish, for example. So, so one discovery builds on the other discovery. So it's very difficult to say what's the most important scientific discovery because science is a building process and you learn from other things. The most important skills to become a scientist uh, I think are, are you have to be curious. So, so scientists have this, this, this ongoing curiosity about how things work because there's always a question. One, one set of uh, results leads to another set of results and so you have to be able to ask questions. If I weren't a scientist, what career would I pursue? Probably music. Probably music. I actually had the opportunity to, um, to, to pursue that. Uh, when I w was playing in the band, I we used to open up for a fairly famous group. And this group liked our performance and asked us to go on tour with them. So I had to make a decision at that point. Do I want to do the music thing or do I want to do the science thing? And I chose the, the science thing. My biggest achievement as a scientist so far, I think, was the discovery of the receptor that I just told you about. So curiosity, perseverance, um, and, um, and uh, hard work. You have to be willing to work hard. So those are the three characteristics, I think, that would make a good scientist. I hope you were listening. Um, basically, basically, he was saying that scientists are, are very nosy people trying to pry into, in, into science and trying to figure out what the answer is. I think I heard Dr. Jones say that, that they're very nosy. And we are. I can be very nosy when I think about that. I'm very inquisitive about what's going on, and I want to pursue the answer. And that's what you have to be. 
And I heard, someone, heard a student say that he's, he's an, he was inter interested in astronomy and how he talks to himself. And a lot of physicists, we do hang out in our own head. So we're not, we, we hang out on the inside of ourselves. A lot of times we're not, you know, like a thermometer. We, we, we don't fluctuate with life and we don't re necessarily respond to our environment so much, but we're more like a thermostat and we're controlled from within. So it doesn't matter what's going on on the outs outside of us. We may think that you're crazy. You may look at us like we're crazy, but we're looking at you the same way. At this time, we're going to ask uh, the green group to come. Those that were in the North Exploration Space Room. Hi, I'm Raven Ferguson. I go to Columbus Afrocentric Early College. And what I learned today was that, like, the money isn't always in the basketball and the rapping and all that. You can, you, you see all that on TV, so you want to be that. But science is not really exposed on TV, so you really don't know about it as much. But, like, figuring out stuff in the world is, like, you can really earn a lot of money from that. And that's pretty much what I all I learned. All right, my name is Daquan Jordan from Columbus Afrocentric Early College. I'm a junior. I'd like to say thank you to the scientists for coming and spending part of their day with us. Um, what I took from the scientists speaking, speaking to us today is that you gotta have, besides the science part, you have to have a strive, a drive, and a dedication for what you do, and everything in life. And if you have that, you will succeed. That's what I took from it. Uh, hello, I'm Christopher Hartway, a um, student at Afrocentric. I'm a sophomore. And um, I also like to thank our speakers. But um, what I learned, I learned a variety of things. But ultimately, I learned that no matter where you come from, you could be from the most impoverished situation, like no water, no lights, no shoes but you can still come out and be on top and be what you want to be. So it inspired me. And um, this is a video with our talk with um, Dr. Kwame Osi. sedentary lifestyle, computers, everything. The more active you are, the less likelihood that you're going to have diabetes. So if you are not active, 
you gain weight, then diabetes will become a, a, a friend of yours. But it's preventable. That's the good news, that if you exercise every day, you can prevent diabetes. There are two main types. One is the juvenile onset, six-year-old, 10-year-old, 20-year-old who has diabetes. Most likely, they have so-called type 1 diabetes, which is the insulin-dependent diabetes. We have another kind of diabetes called type 2 diabetes. This used to be a disease of the older and the elderly. You had to be 50 years old, obese, and you develop that kind of diabetes. Think about yourself. Not only to become a scientist, but whatever you want to be, that you can always achieve. But you have to do a couple of things. One of them will be you have to have passion for what you want to do. Yeah. Why do you think there's some, uh, so few African American scientists? Yeah. That part of it uh, has come about because of a historical, you know, we know the slave trade, you know, in 1800s, we have to build our own schools, and they are, we came a long way. So, you know, we don't have a lot where we want to be, but we are not all that bad. I think what we need to do is have a mentors. For you to become a great scientist, you need a mentor. You need somebody who can guide you. At this time, Ms. Juliana Richardson is coming. She's the president, founder of the History Makers. Let's celebrate her. Thank you, thank you. Chris, you want to say a few things? I thought everyone did an excellent job on their videos, so you really deserve a round of applause. <laughs> so Chris is going to just say a few words there. Hello. Thank you. I haven't even done anything yet. That's fantastic. Um, my name is Chris Kustish, um, and I'm responsible originally for coming on this project to design the DVD toolkit, which some of you have been uh, working with. Um, and I was asked to stay on and help with the public programming. We, one, of the, one of the great things about what Science Makers is doing, we've had similar programs like this in Saint Louis, at the St. Louis Science Center at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago. Um, one of the things that we wanted to do is to give you an experience of what it's like to, for us at the History Makers, to capture some of this history and put it into a format that other people can appreciate. So, for those of you who were, so those of you who are on the production teams, got a little taste of what we at the History Makers do is to take to record history, to record science, to record these testimonies and put them into a format that other people can enjoy and appreciate. Um, so what, what we were tasked to do, um, we had production teams, as all of you know, we had production teams in each, in each room and we had videographers and editors and note takers and things like that. Um, so I want to acknowledge the production teams. Could you guys all stand up who, were, who helped on the production teams? You guys did a phenomenal job. You guys did a fantastic job. And I will tell you, I will tell you, you guys did such a good job that in St. Louis, we weren't able to show videos like this. In Chicago, we weren't able to show videos like this. But because you guys did such a phenomenal job, we were able to show all four videos. Give you guys selves a great big round of applause. So one of the things you, you, one of the things you have all learned is that it's not necessarily about all the things that you're saying, but about pulling the best bits, pulling those kernels of wisdom from what someone is saying and putting them together in a meaningful way. And I want to acknowledge all the teams that helped out. I also want to acknowledge the senior editors that were helping. Um, from OSU, Danielle Kopp, who stepped in at the last minute, and Alex Everett. And then from the history makers, um, Matthew Hickey and myself, we're, we're working with students to get these videos prepared. So thank you very much. Okay, we're almost, we just got one more part of the program and we're going to be done. Janet Curtis, can you please come up? The winners of the YouTube contest, we're going to show them. The first prize is $300, the second prize is $200, and the first prize is $100, and they and their families are invited tonight. Thank you.
Oh, introduce them and then have them roll the right, tape. You right. can tell them when to roll them. You tell them. Okay. Uh, first, should I start from third? Start third. Okay, Dana Strader was third place. If you could go ahead and roll the film, please. Hi, I'm Dana Strader. I got a PhD in mineralogy at the Ohio State University. And mineralogy is basically the study of rocks and minerals based on classification and components. So that means one thing. I won't need this. And I won't need this. But I will need these and these because we will be getting dirty. In mineralogy, you may see one of these things called balance. Right now, I'm trying to determine the weight of this rock to put it into a certain classification. Here, I'm comparing these two rocks. Notice that this one has a rough exterior and thicker composition, whereas this rock has a smooth exterior and longer composition. But, wait a minute. This isn't a rock. It's chocolate! The second place was Deshaun Fentress Ransom. You know that how much effect gravity has on things on Earth? Well, I'm not going to tell you about that. But if you find out, let me know. What I will talk to you about is what I do. I'm a chemist, and I study to find cures for diseases because it's really hurting our population in this world. I got my bachelor's degree from Harvard in chemistry. Then I went to Ohio State University and got my PhD in chemistry. I was born in 1992. I know it's a long time, but hey, I'm still here. These are many of the tools I use daily just to figure out how I'm going to simply find the cure to some of the diseases that I work with. This is a bigger. The ones that look like this are graduated cylinders. Safety is important in these guys. But the one I use mostly is this here microscope. I have to see what is in the bacteria of the disease. And I was in the middle of finding out one at this moment. Uh, yeah, well, i get back to that later. But, hope you enjoy seeing this experience. This has been an experience for you by Deshaun Fentress Branson. And first place was Kiambra Jones. Hello, I'm Shauna Nesbitt and I'm a science maker. I was born on November 10th, 1963. I graduated from Quigley High. I received my BS in medicine at Gannon University. Then in 1988, I received my MD at Hanneman University School of Medicine. In 1991, I became a fellow in hypertension. In the 90s, I became an instructor in the Department of Internal Medicine at the University of Michigan Medical School. Later in 1995, I was hired by Merck and Company Inc. to conduct a life study on individuals with left ventricular hypertrophy. Yeah. As a cardiovascular physicist, I work with African Americans with hypertension. I also work with people who suffer from renal failure, which is actually kidney failure. It can remove excess body fluids and can cause death. I receive awards from the American Heart Association for my work with the cardiovascular etymology and high blood pressure. I served on many boards, the American College of Physicians, the American Heart Association, the International Society of Hypertension in Blacks, the National Medical Association, and the Association of Black Cardiologists. Can we give all of the YouTube uh, contestants a hand? And at this time, I want to thank you for your time here. And so we'll see you later on tonight. Have a blessed day.